Alright guys, welcome to the first episode of Shop Talk. We'll be uh, covering what's going on in the industry between, you know, what's going on with some trails. Um, Polaris, Skidoo, Articat, Yamaha. Um, so it'll be, it'll be a series about uh, going over some things that uh, have recently been going on in the industry. Um, going over uh, stuff you guys might want to talk about you can leave your comments down below send an email so let me know what you you want to hear so anyways we'll get started right off the top so we'll do a we'll go right into the trail update so over in Wisconsin today uh, New Year's Eve Polk County opened in Wisconsin and St. Croix County opened in Wisconsin um, I went riding last weekend and we rode just down the Gandy Dancer basically the whole day. And they're all right, I mean, they're pretty good, but need like six more inches of snow. From the snow that we got, uh, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday, it helped, but I think the trails are gonna be marginal, marginal at best. Um, so just keep that in mind while going out this weekend. Um, I'm not going this weekend. We're going to get some stuff down around the shop and uh, catch up. i got to get uh, carbides done on the skidoo and get the access registered and whatnot. So we're going to take this weekend, let other guys pack down the trail, and then tear stuff up. And we'll, uh, we'll hit it next week, hopefully get a little bit more snow. So yeah, Polk County opened, St. Croix County opened. I know most of northern Wisconsin's open and a lot of stuff in Michigan is open as well. So just keep in mind it's early yet. Uh, try not to tear your stuff up. Have fun, be safe. Um, so that's about it for the trail update. That's about all I know. Um, so let's go right into the news and what's going on with players. So the new Matrix seems to be selling well. Uh, in some of the groups on Facebook, a lot of guys are starting to get their sleds. A lot of guys are liking them. So sales seem to be good on them. You know, players did a really good job on that sled. Uh, you can tell the fit and finish is a lot better. Uh, the 850 and 650 are both great engines. And uh, the new rear end, the Pro CC rear end is, is great too. So uh, sales on the Matrix seem to be doing good. Um, also seen a lot of supply issues from them though uh, in the Facebook groups you can see a lot of guys snow checks are, are not here they were delayed to like December 20th Polaris sent them a $500 check uh, well $500 accessories check um, so you can buy Polaris accessories um, but just keep in mind we're in the middle of a pandemic um, everyone is struggling to get stuff out um, Polaris, Skidoo, Articat, uh, Ram, Dodge, Ford, General Motors. Everyone's having supply issues. So, I mean, I know you just spent fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 on a brand new sled, but just keep in mind that we're in the middle of a pandemic and, and everyone is trying their best to get stuff out. So, like I said, I have, we've been seeing some supply issues Sleds are not showing up at the at the, the desired time. Some sleds are shipping without shocks and getting to the dealership and they don't have shocks. Their Walker Evans are back ordered, so they're waiting on shocks for them. So, I mean, it's a bummer. I know you just spent $16,000 on a snowmobile, but just try to be patient. Uh, Polaris is doing all that they can do to, to get their stuff out to you guys. Um, and then let's talk 2022 for Polaris. Um, so as we all know, this was the first full year of production for Skidoo on the Turbo 850. And my prediction will be for 2022, we're, we're most likely gonna see a Chaos 850 Turbo, a Pro RMK 850 Turbo. Um, I'm thinking we're gonna see one for, for 2022. Um, again, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe it's maybe it's next model year. Maybe we're talking 2023. 
But um, I'm willing to bet we'll see a, a Turbo 850 from Polaris in 2022, or maybe a Factory 900. Uh, I think Polaris is going to step the bar up this year to to try and compete with Skidoo and their their 850 Turbo. Um, I don't know what we're going to see in 2022 for trail suds from Polaris. Um, probably just subtle changes. Um, the Matrix just came out this model year. Um, I don't expect anything big in the trail department. We may see the Matrix chassis come over to the uh, RMK and Chaos in the switchback. We'll know they have it in the switchback already. It's a 146 and not a 144. But I'm thinking we might see a Mountain Matrix for sure in 2022. Um, haven't heard a whole lot about it, but it's a good bet. Um, it's kind of all I got for Polaris at the moment, uh, so let's let's move on to Skidoo. So Skidoo, uh, in a lot of the groups I'm seeing guy sleds being delivered. Not seeing a whole lot of delays from Skidoo. I know there's some, but um, sled new 2021s are being delivered. Seen a bunch of guys get their new Turbo 850s and free rides and and summits. Uh, heard a lot of good things about them so far. Guys are loving them. So, starting to see a lot of those delivered, and that's good. Um, then going over the 850 Turbo, uh, it's a huge thing in the snowmobile industry. First ever factory two-stroke Turbo. Now, I know we only get like five pounds of boost at max altitude, but it's a big it's a big thing for the industry, and I think it's gonna it's gonna be a, a hot commodity, and it's gonna be the sled that everyone's gonna want to end up buying. Um, it's just, I just think that, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna really be a benchmark in the industry for, for mountain riding. I think we're gonna see boost turned up. I think we're gonna see a lot of aftermarket companies like, like Bikeman and, and, uh, other companies coming out with, uh, I know Bikeman already does, but we're gonna see a lot more other companies, um, allow you to tune them, tune turn the boost up um so i it's a great thing for the industry um and i'd like to see players follow suit as soon as they can um skidoo's got a lot of innovation going on doing a lot of good things um so i think the 850 turbo and the free ride in the summit are going to be the benchmark in the mountains um and I think we're going to see players fall suit soon. Um, haven't heard much about belts on them or any reliability issues. They're they're pretty new. Um, so I know guys are enjoying them. I'd love to have one, but I don't have the use for one. Um, also seen in a couple of the groups, uh, a couple guys have picked their sleds up from the dealer and they're not starting they'll turn over they'll keep turning over and they won't fire um read a little bit that it could have something to do with e-tech injectors or a feeling issue um they're turning over but not starting it sounds like the dealers were taking care of them in a pretty quick manner and i haven't seen a whole lot of it just a couple couple units um so i want to talk about skidoo's future a little bit you know um the last couple of years, let's say the last five years, they've, since the T3 came out, Skidoo has really put a lot of focus into the mountains, and it's understandable. That's where a lot of the snowmobile market share is nowadays. Um, I think for 2022, we might see uh, the shot system come to a trail sled, um, or the MXZ and, and, and uh, Renegade. I know that the um, Backcountry XRS a crossover sled and it has shot but i'm thinking mxe and renegades are going to come with a some sort of shot system maybe one that lasts longer or the same shot system i think it's it's going to end up going that way until most of the two strokes are going to have shot on them we could see a turbo 850 mxe or renegade we could um i know their their marketing campaign for the 850 turbo summit and free ride has been to um so it's your, the higher in elevation you go, you maintain the eight, same horsepower as the 850 does, naturally aspirated at sea level. 
but you know if they have the technology to do it uh, obviously so in my opinion why not expand that market and, and come out with a trail sled that you know pushes three to five pounds of boost and it's a sled that's pushing 190 maybe 200 horsepower um but probably only see it in the renegade if it was that much horsepower but i'm hoping we see something like that but we'll see so we'll move on to, to Articat. Some news coming out of Articat. Um, quite big news. Um, last week or the week before, Craig Kennedy stepped down as vice president. Uh, Craig Kennedy has been with the company for many, many years. He was a engineer on the Tiger Shark. Um, eventually worked his way on the ATV side, I believe, working on Wildcats, and then uh, eventually became VP of the company. Um, so Craig has decided to, to step down and, and leave Articat. Uh, they're going to have an interim VP and then they have another guy lined up to, to step in as soon as everyone's up to speed. Forgive me on their names. I, I don't know the two other guys' names. Um, I read the article a little bit ago. But so Craig Kennedy has stepped down. Now, I think it's a good thing. Uh, maybe the company will go in a different direction at this point. Um, we may see a little more growth come out. Nothing against Craig Kennedy or nothing. He was, he was great at the company, but I'm thinking Arctic Arctic needs a change. Uh, they need to they need to rethink some things, or we might not have them around much longer. Um, they're just not seeing the market growth that Skidoo and Polaris are seeing. Um, so I think at this point, change is a good thing. Uh, for 2022, we may see a new chassis from Cat. Uh, they need it really bad. Um, now a lot of people will say uh, it's a it's a good chassis and they've updated it over the years. Yes, that's true. Um, however, if you break it down, you know, 2011 the Procross came out. You know, it was a good good chassis back then, and it's not a bad chassis today. But let's compare what's changed with the other brands since 2011. We've seen. The Rush get multiple updates. Rush has a, has had a rising rate suspension since then. Um, we've seen the Axis come out, and we've seen the Matrix come out. You've seen the Pro R rear suspension. You've seen the Axis rear suspension, and now you have the Pro CC suspension in Polaris. So, and you've also seen the 850 come out and a 650 come out from Polaris. So that's five, six, seven things, big things that uh, Polaris has done. And most of what Articat has done has stayed the same. And prior to Texan taking it over, you were paying the same amount or more for an Articat than you were Polaris at the time. For me, I don't see any reason why I should go spend the same money or the same money or even more money on some Arctic products that are lacking of quality control or just having a more quality product and um, better ride in a Polaris or a Skidoo. Nothing against Cat. I love Cat. I started on Arctic Cats. But they're they're stuck in the past. Uh, a lot of things have changed since 2011. Um, and now I get it. You know, the Ascender platform in 2017, they came out with the SeaTech 2800. Um, the Alpha. Um, the Thundercat with a uh, Yamaha motor in it. I get it. They've they've done some good things. The Alpha was a really good idea, and it still is. Um, however, I just think we need to see more. We need a new chassis. We need a rising rate suspension. Um, and the, they need a little bit more quality control, in in my opinion. Um, I just think. They need a change, and we need to see some more innovation. If Articat chose to innovate just a little bit more than they have, they, they'd see the growth that they once had. Um, I think we need to see more innovative products, um, get in the game, come out with an 850 or 900, uh, come out with a new chassis, get a rising rate suspension in the trail sleds, and I think that will really grow the company and, and get them back to the top and closer to players and skidoo. 
I'm not saying doing a few things like that will they'll take over market share, but I'm thinking, you know, that they they need to have some innovation. They need to have um, they need to have some new things come out. A lot of things have changed since 2011. Even think of from Skidoo. Skidoo in 2011. You just had the uh, the E-Tech 800 come out in 2011. You had the E-Tech 600 back then. Our motion was just coming around then. You know, we've seen a couple different iterations of our motion. We have an our motion X now and skid or we have the R motion X now and Articat still has the same or similar suspension that they did in 2011 in the rear. Um, so again, you know, and then we've seen the 850 E Tech come out. Um, they had in 2011 it was the Rev XP chassis, then it went to Rev XS. And now we have the G4. So with the two leaders in the industry, you've had many, many, many changes since 2011. And it seems that Articat has stayed relatively the same, even with their marketing, uh, their products. Uh, they've really stayed stagnant and around the same as they were in 2011 when the, the Procross chassis came out. And now, like I said, I love Articat. I grew up on them. I was diehard Articat when I started out and I was 12, 13 years old, but things things need to change. They're not the same company they were when the ZR was out and the Firecat was out. Um, I think you can see in their, their products and a lot of their marketing campaigns that they're losing the, the fire that, that Articat had back in the early, to, early and mid 2000s. Now I'm hoping with the new VP coming in, things will turn around, and we'll see we'll see Articat uh, closer to the top of the market again. Um, even when I go out and ride, we don't we don't see many Articats, not new ones. Uh, I don't think I've seen a brand new Articat on the trail in two years, um, and that's going to uh, you know Iron River, all over Wisconsin. I've not seen a brand new Articat on the trail once. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm re I am hoping for Articat's sake that we, we see some changes come, come their way. Yamaha, I think their future is more uncertain than Articat's. Um, never ridden Yamaha, never been a big Yamaha guy. They were, they were a thing before my time, really. Um, they were starting to fizzle out when I got into the industry. And they've kind of stayed the same since then as well. They're using all of Articat's chassis with their motors. Yamaha's not been very innovative. I mean, they've come out with a couple new turbo motors, but I really think they need to build a two-stroke to get back in the game. Uh, they need to go back to the lightweight, fast, revving two-strokes. And they need to come out with a new chassis. They need to make their own chassis. Um, that is different from Articat. Um, I think at the time, the Articat Yamaha uh, relationship sounded like a good idea. And it, it probably was at that time, and I'm not saying that it's not now, but I think it's it divides a lot of brand loyalists. If you're a diehard Yamaha guy, I really wouldn't want to be riding a sub that's mostly developed by Articat with that Yamaha's motor in it. You know, I ride Skidoo's and I ride Polaris's. I would not want to buy a skidoo that was mostly engineered and built by Polaris and the other way around if I was riding a Polaris that was mostly engineered by skidoo I wouldn't be that keen on, on purchasing that snowmobile um, there's a lot of brand loyalty in snowmobiling and I just think that they need to they need to move on from Articat they need to come out two stroke of their own they need to come out chassis of their own Get some innovative thoughts, get some innovative guys in there. And uh, I think we'd see Yamaha turn around as well. And, and we need them. We, we need all four brands in the industry. If if we lose CAD and we lose Yamaha, then we just have Polaris and Skidoo, and, and there's a lack of competition there. So I really, I, I want to see all four brands survive and doing well, even though I don't ride Articat or Yamahas. 
I'm not saying that I never will, but they need to build a product that I would love to buy. And so far that hasn't happened. Um, so I, I, I think they need some innovation as well. Um, if they don't, if, if Yamaha continues to just use Articat supply and build their own motors, I, I don't see Yamaha being around much longer. Um, I think they'd just end up closing the snowmobile division. I don't know what their sales are like, but I've not seen a brand new Yamaha on the trail in the last couple of years either. Um, as far as Skidoo and Polaris, I see a brand new one every year, and almost every weekend I'm out. Um, I don't know what Articat sales are like either very much, but I think both companies need to step aside from each other and and continue to, to innovate in their own ways and we'll see we'll see some improvements there and we need them we need all four brands in, and I hope they both survive um, and that's just my opinion you guys can have different opinions that's fine I was I was diehard Articat too I was diehard Yamaha but I'd probably buy an Articat today not a new one maybe an old Firecat or another old ZR just to zing around on the lake and go ice fishing but I'm not taking thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars and going out and buying buying a brand new cat at this point. I need to see more from them. We need to see an eight fifty from Articat. Yamaha needs to have an eight fifty. Or nine hundred, one up Skidoo and Players, come out with a nine hundred. Come out with a nice, lightweight, reliable chassis, rising rate suspension, good shocks all around. And you'll see improvements. And they need to believe in their products. They need to have a little bit better of a marketing strategy going on and I think we'll see things turn around and again those are my opinions you don't have to agree with them um, but yeah so it's been it's been shop talk this is episode one we'll have multiple episodes and, and I'll be talking like this going over what's going on in the industry um, if you guys have any questions let me know um, not here to upset anyone I just want to let you know my opinions and what I see going on with the market um, but comment down below, subscribe guys, stick around, we'll be doing more, we'll be going riding soon, next weekend we're going riding again, I'll have a mount here for the GoPro on my 509 helmet, and uh, stick around, many good things to come, we're over on TikTok, over on Instagram, over on Facebook, come check it out, come talk, let's interact, uh, let me know what you guys ride, let me know what brands you like, and, and what you guys see going on in the industry. Because we all have different perspectives, and, and that's fine. Um, that's just what I'm thinking um, and what I see going on. We'll, uh, we'll have to see what, what happens. You know, Tech Sean has got a lot of money, and if they're going to save Articat, they're the company to do it. Um, but, yeah, like I said, thanks, thanks for stopping by, guys. Subscribe, comment down below, like, share. Share this with your friends. Share my videos with your friends. Share my TikTok videos. Um, I'll, I'll love to interact with you guys. So we'll see you on the next one. It's been Shop Talk. Thanks.